Today, we're going to talk about what Kyler Murray has to do against Texas to help ensure winning the Heisman Trophy and what it is he's actually against. And all that's coming up after the bumper. What do you mean you don't subscribe to my son's YouTube channel? Mama, no! Just snap the damn ball, RJ. What's up, kin folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Considering the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. So it's always OU related, college football related, sports related. We have a good time. And today, I'm going to tell you what Kyler Murray has to do to try to ensure he wins the Heisman Trophy and what it's actually that he's up against. And I'm telling you, it's not Tua Tonga Valoa. But first, a recruiting update. And I know that that's something that a lot of folks are interested in, especially with the recent decommitments of first Jacoby Jones, who ended up committing to Texas, and now RJ Henderson, who's decommitted for regions for which I will point you to OUinsider.com, where Brandon Drum has a pretty good note. And I agree with him on that. So what is Oklahoma going to do at defensive line? Well, they're still in the running for a guy named Marcus Stripling. You might have known about him. And his top four include Bama, LSU, A&M, and Oklahoma. And there's a lot of folks that feel like OU has edged into the conversation in a real way. But if you move the crystal ball, I tend to believe that he's going to ampersand you because that's what I believed about Marcus Stripling the entire time. However, Oklahoma is in dire need of an all-star defensive lineman and not just to help with this class because this class has all-star defensive linemen. What you need is to load the boat with defensive linemen because I believe Oklahoma needs an elite defensive lineman and or tackle, preferably tackle, but we've already talked about how hard it is to get one of those guys and an elite corner for which Oklahoma has a couple in the boat to lock up the defense with a new defensive coordinator. I think that's what you need today because if you can build around those two guys, you're going to be pretty good defensively, even in a place like the Big 12. Now, as far as wide receivers go, you got some options. Now, there is a fella out of College of the Canyons where Hollywood Brown came from that you might want to pay attention to, and I'll point you to OUinsider.com for details on him. But the name on everybody's lips is Jaden Hazelwood, who has ties to Oklahoma and was a longtime Georgia commit before decommitting. And today it feels like he's going to go to Miami. Now, other folks are in the running like Auburn. But if you look at everything that's gone on with Hazelwood, you got to believe that it's down to Georgia, Miami, and Oklahoma, mostly because Auburn is a dumpster fire, especially offensively. But if he goes to Miami, he can be clear in a way the number one. He can earn an opportunity to play right away without much competition. At Oklahoma, he would be joining a loaded wide receiver class with Theo Weiss and Trajan Bridges, along with a guy like Austin Stogner, who figures to be really great at tight end. So with early signing day approaching, I actually would be shocked to see that he doesn't sign with Miami, even with Georgia and the Oklahoma ties. But OU does have an opportunity to win him because it is his family's dream for him to end up at OU. We'll see what he decides to do. What I do know is, if you get Theo Weiss, Trajan Bridges, and Jaden Hazelwood in the same class, you have an unguardable offense, especially if you can throw in guys like Spencer Rattler, Marcus Major, EJ Ndoma Ogar, Stacey Wilkins. You get my drift here. The 2019 offensive class is legitimately good. Now, as far as what Kyler Murray has to do this weekend against Texas to try to wrap up the Heisman Trophy, the second for Oklahoma in as many years, he's going to have to set the world on fire once again, but that's what he's been doing the whole time. He's been putting up around 450 yards a game by himself, 300 yards passing, 70 yards rushing. He is the offense. And statistically speaking, this 2018 offense is more efficient than the 2008 offense. They score at a stupid 64.2% efficiency rating. The 2008 offense, same number of games, 58%. Which is to say that every 10 possessions, Kyler Murray and Oklahoma are going to get you 44, which is ridiculous. Now, what he is up against is another guy who is also doing something that is unheard of in the sport in Tua Tonga Valoa. Both of them are breaking passer efficiency rating records left and right. They put up touchdowns at a staggering pace. They are pinpoint accurate with their passes. They're both completing passes at over 70% a pop. And while Kyler Murray clearly has the edge in rushing, clearly has the edge in total touchdowns and rushing touchdowns, he's also thrown for more yards and he's thrown for more TDs. The Bama argument is Tua hasn't really played fourth quarters, man. And if he did play fourth quarters, what would his 
these numbers look like? Well, the statistics are the statistics, so we can't actually make up stuff for which Tua didn't do. And if we were going to make up stuff, we might make up a 41-0 to 0 win over Citadel. But that ain't how that went either, is it? So we can't give him credit for stuff he hasn't done, but what we can give him credit for, and these are his clear advantages over Kyler, is he's thrown fewer picks, just two all season. Kyler has thrown seven. He's also put the ball on the ground. But the other clear advantage is he plays on the best team in college football today. While Oklahoma has the best offense, Alabama is clearing away the best football team. And usually the best player on the best team wins this popularity contest. Like, like look back at Derrick Henry winning the Heisman, and you kind of wonder, how does Christian McCaffrey not win it? Well, because Derrick Henry's on the best team, and he's the best player on that team. It's that simple. So what Kyler Murray actually has to do is go out there and do what he's done before, but more than that, he has to combat this idea that Oklahoma is embracing of him playing baseball. There are a lot of college football purists who are voting for the Heisman who want it to go to an absolute football player. There's lots of folks in this sport who want you to be married to football and not dating it, especially if you are the sport's best player. And what does it say about college football if a guy like Kyler Murray can be your sport's best player and not yet even be his best sport? He can just leave and go play baseball. I, for one, love that about football. And I think that's how you get better athletes involved. And I think better athletes want to play football and play another sport, if at all possible. But there are purists out there who will deny Kyler Murray his opportunity to win the Heisman Trophy that I believe he's won and deserves because they hate that he's a pro baseball player. And we'll see what the politicking looks like when it's time to hand out the trophy. All right, that's it for me. Doses.